but one of the most enduring stories of that day that seems so fantastic that people have questioned whether it really happened were the football matches. All right, y'all, welcome back to Coming Arms Channel. Okay, so today is Christmas, so of course, Merry Christmas. You guys know I like to do a special reaction video for these big holidays and whatnot. Now, we've checked out this topic last year, and that's the Christmas truce of World War I. So it's just, it's a really fascinating story, and there's a lot of cool videos out there, and some of them will mention some details that you haven't heard previously. So today we're checking out a video from Yarn Hub, which does some pretty solid stuff. It's about nine minutes long, but I think it'll be enough to give us a, a pretty good background about this Christmas truce, and maybe give us some details that we haven't heard previously. Now, since it is the season for giving and whatnot, I'm going to give you guys this URL. So if you guys want to get three months free on a 12 month subscription for ExpressVPN, I will have that link down in the video description. So I definitely recommend ExpressVPN. If you guys don't have any VPN, I'd recommend this one particularly because for one, they are extremely secure. Now, as far as encryption, they actually have a system to where they promote people actually finding the weaknesses so they can get the encryption and security better and better. Two, they have servers in a bunch of different countries. So if you're trying to get access to content that you don't normally have access to, you can just connect to one of their foreign servers and there you go, you have access. And then three, they don't keep any logs, which is really nice. So for whatever reason, if your internet service provider is trying to see how you're using ExpressVPN or who's using it or what websites you're actually going to, there's no way of them knowing because there are no logs. So I definitely recommend ExpressVPN. Again, that URL is down in the video description. But yeah, let's check this video out. We were greatly inspired by Sabaton's new song, hmm. Christmas Truce, when making this video. Nice. You can stream it now and pre-order their upcoming album, The War to End All Wars, in the link in the description. Okay, I'll check that out. It's the night of December the 24th, 1914, on the Western Front. The so industrial pretty early on in the of war. the new 20th century has been focused into a war that has been going on for eight months. Everyone thought... What the heck was that? It looks like someone just like sawed, it's like a sawed off SMLE or something that they're using for a mortar. Is that accurate? <laughs> if so, that's a pretty interesting design. I've not seen that previously, but okay. Yeah, if you guys have more info about that, please let me know. Eight months. Everyone thought it would be over by Christmas, hmm. but sadly such hopes have now died alongside the young men in the clinging mud and cold of the trenches. Yeah, that weather is freaking On the run-up to Christmas, there were efforts to start peace. Over 100 British women had written an open letter to the women of Germany and Austria, okay. calling for the women to unite and push for peace at Christmas. Huh. Pope Benedict XV begged the warring governments to call a truce and ask that the guns may fall silent, at least upon the night the angels sang. I feel like I've seen that sort of quote before, but I'm not really too sure. So I guess there was like this whole sort of movement to try and actually end the war by Christmas time, which I wasn't aware of. I thought people would just kind of assume that. I didn't know if there were people actually trying to push for that specific date. So I kind of wonder if this actually plays into them actually doing the Christmas truth. Because from what I understand, it kind of just happened out of nowhere and there wasn't really anything that inspired it. I guess just besides it being a holiday. At least upon the night, the angels sang. But all these efforts were for nothing, as the generals refused the requests, and war continued to slog on without interruption. Frickin' generals, man. In the trenches, <laughs> sometimes just 30 meters apart, the men of both sides often shout insults to each other above the sounds of battle. 30 meters? On Christmas Eve, the enthusiasm for battle just isn't there with the men on all sides. They're just how can it be 30 meters from the enemy and get like any sleep, honestly? Especially when like, I don't know if this er early on in the war, if you know them rushing the trenches was like a pretty common thing, but you gotta think that that threat is going to be in the back of your mind the entire time, especially when they're only, what, less than 100 feet away. Heartened to be away from their families at Christmas for the very first time. Suddenly, a cry comes over from the German side. In broken English, tomorrow, you know shoot, we know shoot. Okay. The huh. British and French are incredulous. Then, along the trenches, there's a movement. The British on alert keep watch on the enemy activity. Yeah, I think it's but like instead a trap. of seeing the sight of men going over the top, this time, pushed up above the top of the trenches, 
Christmas trees start to appear along the journey. <laughs> I lines, didn't hear about lit this. Up by flickering candles. Is it a ruse? Could it be real? What what Christmas tree? Where would they get like the actual Christmas tree from? And like candles, okay, I kind of understand that. You kind of need lighting in the trenches and whatnot, but like what kind of tree are they using? Is it just like sticks or something? On the wind, drifting across no man's land, there's a sound of hope. It's the sound of cheer, the sound of peace as carols in German are sung. Hmm. The gentle murmur becomes stronger and is picked up yep. by more and more of the soldiers. Not, not as Christmas Eve Silent becomes night. Christmas Day, the British and French join in too. As the morning draws, there's silence. Hmm. I've heard about this part for sure, the silent night. In a night. farmhouse a short distance away from the front line is 18-year-old Scotsman Alfred Anderson. He hmm. vividly recalled that Christmas day and said, I remember the silence, the eerie sound of silence. Only the guards were on duty. We all went outside the farm buildings and just stood listening. <laughs> and of course, thinking of people back home. All I'd heard for two months in the trenches was the hissing, cracking and whining of bullets in flight yeah, machine no gun kidding. fire and distant German voices. But there was a dead silence that morning. I mean, after being at war for like this many months, however long it was at this point, yeah, you can imagine whenever it starts, you know, simmering down and there's no like rounds going off or explosions going off, it's going to be really creepy. And of course, a lot of people aren't going to trust it. Right across the land, as far as you could see, we shouted, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Even though nobody felt merry. <laughs> Most okay. reports said that the first initiatives came from the German side, tentatively walking into no man's land with their hands in the air, the tension of fear and hope in the balance. Hmm. On Christmas Day, Brigadier General Walter Congreve, commander of the 18th Infantry Brigade, wrote a letter saying that when the Germans declared a truce for the day, one of his men bravely lifted his head above the parapet and others yeah. from both sides walked into no man's land. That is brave. Meeting in the middle, officers and soldiers shook hands and made peace with their enemies, oh, yeah. swapping cigarettes and cigars. One of his captains smoked a cigar with a young fellow just 18 years of age, hmm. but who was also the best shot in the German army. The general <laughs> didn't take part in the truce for fear of German snipers not being able to resist taking a shot at a general. 25-year-old yeah, French soldier Gustave Berthier wrote that Christmas Day, the Germans made a sign showing they wished to speak. They said they didn't want to shoot. Hmm. They were tired of making war. They were married, like me. Captain Bruce Ber Yeah, I remember hearing when the Germans were trying to initiate this. At some point, like the other side, they were about to start shooting at them because they thought it was a trap or something. I'm not sure if that's necessarily the case. I'm sure you do, he you do hear a lot of like, dramatized details concerning this specific events but it is kind of cool to get some more details or sort of hear the same details over and over again makes it seem a little bit more factual the famous military cartoonist wrote i wouldn't have missed that unique and weird christmas day for anything i spotted a german officer some sort of lieutenant i should think and being a bit okay. of a collector i intimated to him that i had taken fancy to some of his buttons i brought what out my heck? wire clippers and with a few deft snips, removed a couple of his buttons <laughs> and I put them in my pocket. So I then weird. gave him two of mine in exchange. Okay, well, at least you got I some. I saw one return. of my machine gunners, who was a bit of an amateur hairdresser in civil life, cutting the unnaturally long hair of a docile German. He was patiently <laughs> a, kneeling a docile on the ground, German. whilst the automatic clippers <laughs> crept up the back of his neck. Hmm. Good-natured celebrating was had by all sides, with champagne, they really cognac, have and rations being shared. Inevitably, like all the best parties, that sounds really cool. at some point the men decided to have a sing-along. Given the mixture of English, Scots, <laughs> Irish, Prussians, Württembergers, finding a common what song that? that everyone knew wasn't easy. According to one British captain, it descended frequently into Old Lang Syne. He said, it was absolutely astounding. And if I had seen it on a cinema film, I should have sworn that it was faked. <laughs> some German soldiers managed to get some barrels of beer that they had liberated from a French brewery into no man's land. Nice. A British soldier, Frank Richards, said they raised toasts to one another's health. Yeah, and all no sides hard feelings. Agreed that French beer was rotten stuff. 
But one of the most enduring stories of that mm. day that seems so fantastic that people have questioned whether it really happened were the football matches. Yep. That they you took hear it all the time. Should be under so. no doubt, as there were many records from the men and the players who took part. Yep. From somewhere, a football appeared. Look, <laughs> again, like you hear this stuff, like yeah, from somewhere, a, a football appeared. Like all of a sudden, they had these Christmas trees and this this football and whatnot. I'm sure it's totally possible, and I I guess even when you're in the trenches, you can have something for entertainment. But yeah, I mean, there are a lot of stories and details about the, the football matches that they're actually having on this particular day. So it probably happened, but it's kind of funny where people are just like, yeah, we don't know where this football came from. It kind of just Dennis happened. Of the 134th Saxon Infantry Regiment told that the English brought a soccer ball from their trenches and pretty soon a hmm. lively game ensued. How marvelously wonderful, yet how strange it was. A so cheer went up as kickabout started along the line. There were many matches, some with proper footballs, some with bully beef cans. Some were <laughs> nice. disorganized scrambles for the ball, but some were organized matches. Hmm. Robert Graves reported that in his match, the Germans won 3-2. Okay. The Argyle and Southern Highlanders reported that their match ended 4-1 to Scotland. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like even if you crush them like four to one, you do kind of lose the bragging rights if it was a can. I mean, it's definitely a cool story to tell after the war, but yeah, playing football with a can doesn't sound like something that's easy to get used to. The spirit of the Christmas truce didn't grip everyone. Fraternizing with the enemy was not seen as an honorable pastime. Oh my gosh. Me. Charles de Gaulle wrote of the lamentable desire of French infantrymen to leave the enemy in peace. A corporal in the 16th Bavarian Reserve Infantry called Hitler was opposed to the truce and said such a thing should not happen in wartime and went on to question uh, the honor of the Germans who took part. My gosh. It was not all no fun chill. and games. The men buried their fallen and tended to injuries. Hmm. As the day wore on, the truce that an estimated 100,000 men took part in came to a close. 100,000? Whoa, I didn't know As it was the men that much. moved back to their trenches, Captain Charles Stockwell took it upon himself to fire three shots skyward. That's he gotta be the worst flag, feeling. Upon which was written, Merry Christmas. His German opposite raised a flag that read, Thank you. The two men <laughs> then stood on the ramparts and saluted each other. That's pretty cool. I never heard about that. Alfred Anderson, the young Scotsman, survived the war and lived to the age of 109. Whoa, he said at the end of the geez. truce, the silence ended in the early afternoon. The story was a short you could tell. in a terrible war. But one of mm. the most remarkable quotes comes from a young soldier who, despite being away from his family for the first time, said of the events on that day, I wouldn't have missed it for the most gorgeous Christmas dinner in England. Wow, that's saying a lot. Yeah, not so cheerful anymore. <laughs> All the shells coming down and stuff. And those shells were nasty back then. Merry Christmas, everyone, and happy holidays. We at Yarn Hub wish you all a happy and peaceful new year. Hell yeah, good stuff. Appreciate you guys. All right, again, a very cool story. So we did hear some details that we haven't heard previously, especially at the end with the, with the salute and whatnot. That's pretty cool. Again, you can see all the mutual respect coming out in events like this. Now, there's not many that are really on this sort of scale as far as all the different stories and as far as how it all went down and whatnot, especially like World War One, which is the terrible war. And having an event like this is obviously going to take some of that spotlight for sure. But yeah, there are events like this where you do hear about people respecting each other and sort of, you know, stopping the fighting for certain occasions and whatnot. And it is really cool, especially when you've been fighting in the same conditions for so long, you kind of get a good appreciation for how sucky everybody's feeling right now. But yeah, very, very cool. Of course, if you guys have anything to add as far as any other stories, please throw them down in the comments section. If you haven't checked out the video that I did previously about this, I definitely recommend checking it out. I think it was like, it was like an advert for some chocolate or something, but it was done really well. So it's kind of cool. That was like a more of a live action sort of video, but this is kind of cool too. And again, Yarn Hub does some pretty cool stuff. So 
I don't know how accurate a lot of these details are. I mean, it is World War One. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of stuff that's exaggerated. But even still, like even if it is exaggerated or has like a fraction of the of the truth there, it is still really really fascinating to hear about all these people, especially that many people. They said a hundred thousand, which is pretty insane. I don't know how long the actual fighting lines were, but for a hundred thousand people to just chill out and start commingling with each other. It's pretty cool. I'm sure there's a lot of stories of that going wrong as well as far as like people just being a little bit too antsy and like popping some shots off and just kind of ruining the vibe. I'm sure there's a lot of stories like that as well. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy it again. A Merry Christmas to all of y'all. Now, I would have worn more Christmas sweaters the entire month of December, but I kind of just forgot. But I do have the Santa hat now. And I do have the Christmas sweater now. So I did remember it for this video at least, but hopefully you guys enjoy the efforts. And again, hopefully you guys have a good holiday, whatever holiday you're celebrating or whatever occasion you find to celebrate and have a good time. Hopefully you guys have a good one, but thank you guys for watching. That is it for this video. I will see you all in the next one.